Hello and welcome back to another episode of What the Hack. Today, we are going to be talking about search algorithms. So, what are search algorithms? Why are they important? Let's dive into this topic right away. If you remember from the first episode of our What the Hack series, an algorithm is an instruction or a sequence of steps to take for solving a problem. Let's begin with the problem that we need to solve. Say we need to look through an, our transcript or grade record to find if we have the grade A in any of the courses we've taken or not. We look through the transcript, we look at each record or on the transcript and check whether it is A or not. In other words, we are searching for grade A in our transcript. If we can do this as humans, we can code this logic into an algorithm that does the searching for us. And that is what a search algorithm is. Formally, search algorithm refers to an algorithm designed to check or retrieve a specific element from a data structure. In our case, the grade A from our list of grade records or transcript. Search algorithms form an important part of many programs. Some searches involve looking for an entry in a database, which can be a transcript. There are many types of search algorithms, and they all have their strengths and weaknesses when working with different sizes and structures of data. Although programmers can choose from numerous search types to select the algorithm that best matches the size and structure of the database to provide a user-friendly experience. In our case, we will start from the basic and base our search algorithms on lists, also known as arrays. Let's take our grades example to explain a simple search algorithm. We want to see if Susan received an A on any of her finals. In our array, which contains a list of all of Susan's grades, we go through each subject's grades and check if it is A or not. If it is, we report back that Susan has an A in her finals. Otherwise, we report that she doesn't. Based on the type of search operation, the algorithms are generally classified into two categories. Sequential search, where the list or array is transversed sequentially, meaning going from the start to the end and every element is checked, for example, linear search. In a list of n elements, search for a given element which we call x. A simple approach to do linear search in this case is to start from the leftmost first element of the list and one by one compare x with each element of the list. If x matches with an element, print the index at which the element was found. If x does not match within any of the elements, then print element not found. The second type of search operation is called interval search. These algorithms are specifically designed for searching in sorted data structures, meaning that the elements in our list, array, or other data structures are organized in a certain way or order, such as in ascending or descending order if the elements are numbers. These type of searching algorithms are much more efficient than linear search as they repeatedly target the center of the search structure and divide the search space in half. For example, binary search. In our demonstration, we will see searching with both linear and binary searches. To start off with linear searching, we will be using functions that we learned in our previous episode to write the search algorithms. If you are not familiar with the concept of functions or need a refresher, feel free to check out the 11th episode of our What the Hack series before diving into details with us here. Let's say we have an array or a list of numbers like this. An array named ARR or R that contains the numbers 2, 3, 4, 10, and 40. And we are searching for the number 10 in this array. Let's store this target number that we have in mind in the variable x. To get the search algorithm running, we write the following functions before the array declaration. We will first define a new function and give it a name linear search. And in this linear search algorithm, we will need three parameters an array of the information that we want to look through a variable n, which will tell our function how many elements our array or list contains, and a variable x, which tells our algorithm which value in our case, which number to search for in the array that we provide. Within our linear search algorithm, we will use a for loop, which we learned about in the fifth episode. This for loop will take the range from 0th index to the second last index of our array and do some checking for us. If we want our program to check some conditions and decide what to do, we will use an if statement. Within this if statement, we will have our array and index it with 
the iterator variable in our for loop and check if the value in this index of the array is the same as that we want or not, the x variable. This will ask our function to go into the array. Start from the first index to the last index and check if the element in this index is the same as x or not. With an indentation after our if statement, this tells our function that whenever our if statement sees that an element inside our array is the same as the value that we want to check, we will have it return the iterator variable i, which will tell us which index the value is found at. If our if statement goes through every element in our array and doesn't find the value matching what we are looking for, we will exit this for loop by having the indentation of this last return statement, the same as the for our loop. This tells our pro program that after everything in our array is checked, if there is no match, give us the number negative 1. Then we go back to after our declaration of x is equal to 10 and write the following code. Here we call our linear search function and give it the array that we already defined, the number 5, which is the size of our array, and x, which is the value that we are looking for. Remember at the end of our linear search, either an index of the matching value or the number negative 1 will be returned, and so we will have to save it into a new variable called result. If the result from our linear search function is negative 1, then it means that our algorithm didn't find the element that we are looking for in the array. So we will have Python say that the element is not present in the array. Otherwise, if the result is a negative 1, then it means our linear search algorithm found something, and it will return the index of where the matching value is found inside the array. In this case, we will have Python tell us the element is present at index plus 1, which tells us the position the value is found at inside our array, because remember, computers start computing from 0 instead of 1. So we need to add 1 to the return value when showing to whoever is using our program. Here we get the output. Element is present at index 4. Now we are going to check how binary search works. It is more complicated search technique and involves a sorted list. Binary search searches through a sorted list by repeatedly dividing the search interval in half. Begin with an interval covering the whole list. If the value of the search key is less than the item in the middle of the interval, narrow the interval to the lower half, otherwise narrow it to the upper half. Repeatedly check until the value is found or the interval is empty. A great example for binary search would be a dictionary. A dictionary is sorted in the sense that all the words are ordered by alphabets. If you flip through a dictionary from the first page to the last page, you will see words that start with the letter A from the word that starts with the letter B and so on. Using the binary search method, we can start checking the dictionary from the middle of all pages. And we will see that the words that we see all start with the letter M. Because this dictionary is sorted, we know that the letter H comes before the letter M. We can ignore all the pages that come after the page that we are at now and only focus on the pages that come before the page that we are on. With only the first half of the dictionary, we can again split the pages in half and see what letters the words start with. Here we will find that letters all start with F, which comes before the letter H. This means that we know that we can look through the second half of this part of the dictionary and ignore the others. We use binary search since it is faster than linear search. This is mainly because it doesn't have to search through each and every element in the list to find the element we are searching for. Imagine flipping through the whole dictionary and looking through possibly 171,476 words one by one to find the one that we are looking for. Binary search can help us cut the number of words that we have to check in half or even more. In our demonstration, we will look at the same example of lists or arrays, but with the binary search algorithm. One key difference here is that we need to start with a sorted array. After the first check, if we know that our value should come before or after the current index, we can then ignore the other elements and focus on the ones that we know our value will be in for the next search. The algorithm is as follows. Compare x with the middle element. If x matches with the middle element, we return the mid index. Else if x is greater than the mid element, then x can only lie in the right half sublist after the mid element. So we search through the right halves next. 
Else, if x is smaller, then we search through the left half. We start with defining the list and then sorting it using the Python inbuilt sort function. We have list binary is equal to 2, 40, 3, 10, and 6. This function will sort our list of numbers and save it back to the list automatically. Then we will save the number that we want to check in this list, which is 10 into a variable x. Then we go above the declaration and write up the binary search algorithm in code. We save the leftmost index and the rightmost index of the list in the variables left and right respectively. The elements to be searched for is in x. We then calculate the value of the middle index. Here we use double forward slash since we want integers as our output values and not floating point numbers. Next we check if x is present at mid. If it does, our work is easy and we just return the mid index number. However, that is not usually the case. So when x is greater than the mid value, ignore the left half and shift the extreme left index to one more than the mid index value. Similarly, if x is smaller, ignore the right half and shift the extreme right to one less than the mid index value. If we reach here, that is till the end of the list, then the element was not present. We then go back below x is equal to 10 and write the following function call. After that, we check if the value returned by the function is equal to negative 1. That is, the element is not present in the array. Otherwise, we add 1 to the result to get the index at which the element is present and print the value of the index. Now that we have learned how linear and binary searches work, don't forget to check out the challenges where you can use what you have learned today to solve some fun problems. That is all for this episode. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next episode.